I accidentally made non-alcoholic beer and it's amazing. You don't have to take my word for it because I invited my favorite problem drinkers over and served some up to them without telling them what it was. Here's what they think about it. I Cheers. Guess. Cheers. 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 Dude, this is awesome. It's almost like a Bud Light, but with like really good hop flavors in it. This would be like perfect at a festival. You want to have a couple beers, but you don't want to be drunk. Well, the thing is, is this feels like and a beer. It's like you're drinking a beer. I agree. Like it is remarkably close to like Pilsner, kind of. You know, I could drink this all freaking day. I'd rather drink this than a non-alcoholic beer. Now I'm definitely what you would call pro-alcohol. I own a company that sells brewing and distillation equipment. In any given year, I generally brew about a hundred gallons of my own beer. This. This is not a bar, uh, this is my office. I have six beers on tap right now. I drink a lot. But every great once in a while, I'll take a break from drinking. More commonly, I'll just try to substitute low or no alcohol beverages like hop water or NA beer in place of actual beer. The only problem with this strategy is that NA beer, for the most part, is really bad. It's like confusingly bad. Hop water, on the other hand, tends to be more reliable. Not only is it not bad, I think it's actually pretty good. Once I discovered hop water, I stopped drinking NA beer and started drinking a lot of it until I realized how crazy expensive it is. It hit me the other day, Jesus man, this stuff is so expensive. Lagunitas' hop water actually costs more more than their IPA, $9 per four pack. So I eventually started making my own hop water and that is how I eventually accidentally made this NA beer. So here's the deal. It's about as difficult to make good hop water as it is to make good NA beer, which is to say that it's actually not that easy. If you just boil hops in water, then chill and carbonate, it tends to be pretty rough around the edges. And I thought, hey, what if I naturally carbonated my hop water by adding a tiny bit of dextrose or dry malt extract and some yeast? My theory was that it would mellow the hops a bit and add some additional depth to the hop water. That's what I did and it was a dramatic improvement. In fact, this is the only way I make hop water now. Then I thought, you know, I don't actually need that much sugar to naturally carbonate a keg. I wonder if there would be enough sugar left over in the spent grains from one of our brew days because no mash is 100% efficient. There's always some sugar left in the grains. We've let our grains drain for 10 minutes. We're just gonna pull this guy. We're gonna put him over here. You don't actually need two kettles for this, but if you have two kettles, why not? Why not? So we have five and a half gallons of reasonably warm water here. It's about 120 some degrees actually. We're just gonna slowly pour it over those Sweet. grains. If I were to do a quick sparge after pulling the grains during a normal brew day and collect the water in a separate kettle, I could potentially extract enough fermentable sugar to carbonate hop water. And bonus, I'd also pull some of the non-fermentable sugars for some residual sweetness and some of the malty flavors from the grains. So once I have about half the water poured in, I will stir it up a little bit just to make sure we're getting all that grain. This is actually what is called a party gal mash. And it worked great. It actually worked a bit too well because there's so much flavor and depth from the grains that it's much more like a light hoppy beer than a hop water. And that's what I accidentally created here. Another characteristic that makes this stuff more like beer than hop water is the alcohol content. Naturally carbonating with sugar and yeast produces not only CO2, but also a tiny bit of alcohol. An A beer typically has half a percent ABV or less, while hop water more commonly contains zero percent. This is a half a percent. And this also is actually the only hitch with this method of producing NA beer. If you aren't careful, you can end up with more than half percent ABV. If you're trying to stay under half a percent for the party guile mash NA beer, then make sure the initial mash is for a beer that is about 5% ABV or less. Otherwise, you're going to have too much sugar. You're looking for a starting gravity of about 10.05, which sounds crazy low, but that's roughly what you're looking for. Once you make the party gal mash, all you need to do is heat to a boil, 
hop like normal, you can experiment with the hop schedule, but I would suggest keeping it to five ounces of hops or less. More than that, it's gonna be way too much for this. Chill, aerate, pitch a little bit of yeast. You don't need that much, and you can use any kind you want. The important part is put it in a sealed keg. You don't need an airlock. In fact, you can't use an airlock for this to work. It must be sealed so that the yeast during the process of fermentation actually carbonates the beer. Just ferment at room temperature for a couple of weeks. Put the keg in a kegerator, chill to serving temp, and serve. It's better to be under when it comes to CO2 than over. If this isn't bubbly enough, just make up the difference with forced carbonation from the tank. If you enjoyed this video, donate $5,000 using the super thanks button next to the share button, and then watch another one of our videos, such as one of these. Thanks, see ya.